Evening. Good evening. Everyone else, clear off. Um, this should go down quite well, I would imagine. I lived in London. Don't ask why. But I lived there. And one night, three o'clock in the morning, I heard this noise from the kids' bedroom. Crept in, fast asleep. Hmm. And I noticed this green laser beam pen thing shining through the curtains. Hmm. What's going on here? Open the curtains. There's this uh, bloke outside, sort of frothing at the mouth, eyes quite wide. And I opened the window and I said, what are you doing, mate? He said, get him out here now. I said, what? It's not a very good Cockney accent, I'll give you that. <laughs> <coughs> Something I've got to practice when I get the time. So, this bloke, I think, get him out here now. I know he's in there. I said, what? I don't know what you're talking about. Get him out here now. I know he's in there. I said, look, mate, I think you've got the wrong house. He said, it's not a house, it's a flat. There you go, getting grammatically corrected by a cockney bloke at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Made me laugh once I moved to Torquay. Yeah. What did I let myself in for? Moved next door to this bloke. He had this car parked on the driveway. Big dent in the front. Rust all over the place. Me little lad was out there playing football. Six years old. The ball hit the tyre of this car. And he leaned and shouted out of the window. Mind my car. Hmm. I'm in trouble here with characters like that. I thought to myself. When the wife was coming back from the shops, whistling the theme to the Teletubbies, he leaned out of the window and he said, my wife's not fat, she's pregnant. Now that took me quite a while to figure that one out. How humorous it really is. But you tend to disagree. <laughs> Apart from the chocolates in the crowd. Nothing wrong with chocolates, you know. Better than characters from Liverpool who just. <laughs> do that. So, I was thinking, why did I move to Torquay? <coughs> Wait, what was that? <laughs> Hawkwind playing tonight. <laughs> uh, you can't beat a bit of Hawkwind in Middlesbrough on a Saturday night. Bit of a short number though, that one. <laughs> I like the ones that go on for 20 minutes, we say. Anyway, so, there I am. With this weird bloke who, um, actually I've got a bone to pick with you characters. You know, northerners. I'm not blaming you people in here now, but northern characters who vote you kids. Now, you're on my side, I can see. So we'll be rocking tonight with no threat of violence unless some sneaky bloke at the back has taken a disliking to that. So I thought, um, these black wife chap and his little kids, I think they, um, it's quite a common thing in Devon and Cornwall to um, not like disabled people, which I think is a UK policy. So we had all this weird nonsense going on. And the strange thing is, the people who lived in the place I moved into were the Torquay notorious criminal family. Fighting in the streets, drug dealing, all these sort of things. And I thought, how did he get on with them? And he doesn't like me. 
But the punchline is, one day, Christmas time, friends of the family came down, parked outside the house. I think this bloke's mother, or mother-in-law, came down and put two empty milk bottles on the doorstep for the sole reason of Eve's dropping. Yep. <laughs> How do I know this? There is no milk round in our streets. <laughs> You've got to be fairly astute when you live next door to that block. But the... the Proper punchline. There's one day parked outside. I looked out the window, it was pouring with rain. I thought, well, you know, no one goes to the shops in that kind of weather, do they? So I sat down. Ten minutes later, looked out the window again. He's still sat in his car over the road. Only, what, ten foot from his front door. I was thinking, oh, what's going on? I'm still not going to the shops. By the way. Twenty minutes went by. That was some sort of foreign language I just spoke. <laughs> and there's no way I'll be able to repeat that in the future, even though I'd like to. Twenty minutes went by. Knock at the door. It was the police. I said, "Excuse me, sir. We've had uh, complaints of intimidation." I looked out the window. Yes. Ah, right. And the trouble is, your neighbour is so intimidated that he's scared to get out of the car and is worried his frozen food will thaw out. <laughs> That's all true stories. I'll, I'll have to tell you up front now. I don't do jokes. When I don't do songs, I only tell true stories. So we can stay on that topic, which is obviously not to your liking. <laughs> but it is to mine, so I'll carry on. So we move to this other place down the road. You know, not so far to walk back from the shops. Because then you'd have to walk up the road. To... Too much of a, an incline for my liking, this road was. Gradients, things like that. Anyone who drives trucks will know the situation. Oh, so no one drives trucks. So you don't know my situation, so you just have to take my word for it. Yeah, all right. Gravity, it's a wonderful thing. I do like various planets with different gravitational pulls. You know, name me a planet. Oh, so, no, I don't actually. Your readers! Ha. Right, so, there we are. Moved into this new place. And one day, I'll skip the rubbish bit. <laughs> The wife got on quite well with the old dear next door and, you know, for a couple of years chatting over the fence and doing a bit of gardening, things like that. And as we're a sort of ecological type family, we decided, because it was in the newspaper, the shortage of bees and butterflies. So we thought, right, let's get some of them things that you put in the ground, uh, plants. So we got these plants that were bee and butterfly friendly. And the next spring, over the winter, or maybe it might have gone a year and a half, I'm not sure. But, so, the old dear next door wouldn't speak to the wife and didn't bother me. So, you know, all I do is the washing up. I don't like neighbours after the previous experience, <laughs> or the two previous experiences. And I was doing the washing up one day, and I heard the wife next door to the old bloke 
say to her son, there's too many bees and butterflies around here for my liking. Yeah. Well, that's a true story. So, we thought we were doing the planet a favour and the next door neighbours disagreed. That's the trouble with next door neighbours. But I live in Torquay, as you know, which is so more or less compulsory to have decking. And uh, one day, my mum was due to visit, and I thought, right, do a bit of tidying up. Got all the things in the bin bag, out the back door, pouring with rain. As you know, I don't like going out in the rain. So I chucked this bag out in the back on the decking. Next day, I thought, right, I'll sort out the garden to get all everything nice. Pick this bin bag up. All the rubbish fell all over the floor. Ah, right. Do a bit of tidying. So I tidied all the mess up. And I looked, and I could see these uh, semicircular holes in the woods. And as I am, you know, an expert on quite a few things, geography's one. Animals' teeth is the other. <laughs> I could tell that the incisors of rats. My mum doesn't like rats. What am I going to do? Chili powder, right? Chopped a load of chili powder around this hole. Loads, you know, like a big pack like this. Bargaining the the West Midlands. About a tenner's worth in Torquay. But it was worth it, so I chucked it all down. If that rat ain't coming back, I thought to myself. And my mum came the next day, pottering around the kitchen, trying to do things. She said, I'll just do that. I said, no, no, leave it, leave it. I'll do it in a bit. Ignored me. It's quite a common thing. So. She went out in the garden, and she, I heard this scream. Came up and said, What? what? She goes, look at that there. I said, What? I said, Look, what's that there? Oh, chili powder. She said, Look what it's done to that wood. You eat that stuff every day. <laughs> it is good, that one, isn't it? <laughs> True story. <laughs> ah, I might go now. Leave on a high note. That's the way uh, comedy acts behave, isn't it? I don't know myself, I'm just guessing. But never seen a comedy act. It was funny. Right, so uh, the other true story. Here's a good, good advice for you now. Uh, I'd say... Every three years, get your partner an atlas for Christmas. <laughs> Don't laugh yet. It's, you know, in about 16 years, no, that doesn't divide by three, does it? In uh, maths is not my, you know, I'm not an expert. I'm fairly good, as I was only one year out of divisible numbers, but... Uh, Every three years, get your partner an atlas. You know, I bet you haven't got an atlas with South Sudan in it, have you? Oh, you haven't even got an atlas. Right, I'll save this one for London then, I think. <laughs> so anyway, now, real proper good advice this. Look around you. That was. I do sign language as well. <laughs> now, but the state of the world today, you know, you need a new atlas every three years, I find. And one day I was doing the Guardian crossword, struggling a bit. And this clue was something the capital of Honolulu. 
See, you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> normally someone will go, Honolulu is the capital of Hawaii. <laughs> but I don't blame you. <laughs> so, I there and got the atmosphere. Right, E4. Right, right. Well, hang on a minute. I had all the contours of the mountains. The wife got in from work. I said, you know what? That's the best atlas I've ever bought you, that is. She said, what? I said, well, you know, the contours of the mountains. That, you know. Oh, that's where I spilled a candle last night. <laughs> All true stories. Right, I'm trying to do this uh, world record for impressions. <laughs> Blimey. Normally, it's stony silence like it has been for the last ten minutes. <laughs> so I've got this plan. I've already got it down to five impressions in two seconds. That's not bad, David, is it? No? What do you reckon? Man? Not bothered. No. <laughs> right. But what I want to do is try and get it to seven impressions in... Three and a half seconds. But I'll need some advice afterwards. So I'll do you me world record attempt. <clears throat> Two seconds, right? Thank you. <laughs> Did you not get any of them? <laughs> no? Well, I thought they were quite good. <laughs> so any suggestions of who I just did an impression of? She's not a baldy bloke. <laughs> that was a bit of a clue. <sighs> and I'm not a fan on Newsnight either, to be honest. But, uh, no? No suggestions? No, no easy guesses? Elvis. Oh, come on. <laughs> Never seen a baldy Elvis. <laughs> no. Blink, you know, I wish I was in Edinburgh now. <laughs> They got all three, well, they got three of them within, you know, rapid time. Brian Eno. Hey, that's the hardest one to get, that is. <laughs> well done. You deserve a prize. Jesus. Unfortunately, there is no prize. <laughs> yeah, all right. Mark, give David a badge. Oh, he's already got one. Anyway, so, the other four, any idea? You're You're Smith. Oh. I'll have that one for the sixth yeah. impression. Right? Uh, no, well, the other one, obviously, is Phil Collins. Uh, We've got Brian Eno, Phil Collins. No, oh, I'm saving that one, man. That's the, for the super world record. Ian Duncan Smith. No! <laughs> There's no way. A good suggestion, but I, I'll just come out in a rash when them words are spoke. No, so you've got Brian Eno, which is the hardest one to get. Phil Collins, that's the easiest one. Mussolini. Uh, I, I might have to go for the Super World record. Uh, ten, ten impressions in two seconds. Thanks for that, mate. No. So we got Phil Collins, Brian Eno, you know, Bruce Willis. He's normally the easiest one to get. And then you got the two obvious ones. Teddy Savannah. Oh, Murray. I'm going to have to go for 11 impressions. Now, oh, Cockney blokes. Not a Cockney bloke. <laughs> yeah, not bad. <laughs> yeah. Right. Grant Mitchell and Phil Mitchell. But you don't get that up here, do you? No. 
No, it's, I thought it was barred, that barred. rubbish programme. So anyway, thanks for the other advice. Yeah. So, anyone been to Glastonbury? No. Ah, it's a long way from here. <laughs> but I still don't believe it. Someone in this room has definitely been to Glastonbury. When I was free to get over the wall. Well, it used to be free and you didn't have to get over a wall. Yeah, but after that... That's when I went. Yeah, well, I went fucking when it was free to get over the wall. Well, if you climb a wall, it's yeah. free, isn't it? Yeah. But I didn't have to climb a wall, that's the point. Wow! I just walked up and She's got a star. Walked up. No. She's got a star. Ah, no. no. Anyway. <laughs> So this long haired bloke sat outside his teepee and said, uh, How are you doing, Chief? <laughs> he said, Do you want some LSD? I said, Don't be daft. What? <laughs> Went decimal 47 years ago, I think. He <laughs> said, Do you want some grass? Well, I was tempted. But I said, No, I've got crazy pain. <laughs> it's good, I think. Good. Classics stand the test of time. No room for a garden. Did you want to? <laughs> I was walking down this road the other day. Go on, then. What happened? A block come up to me. Tell us how far the railway station is, mate. Ah, how far was it? I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, because that's exactly what I would have said. <laughs> you know, me, railway stations. Can't be bothered anymore. But this bloke did come up to me the other day. He said, I've just got back from Nam. He was an army bloke. I said, uh, Vietnam. He said, no, Cheltenham. He keeps changing his mind. This <laughs> One day he likes rugby, but the other day he likes horse racing. I just, yeah. It's the same bloke every day. But the other thing about being a top comedian is you can just say any old rubbish and get away with it. So, any topics, anyone got a topic, make a joke out of anything. Tea? Oh, mint. No, mint's a true story. <laughs> As I told you, I'm not good at maths. So I reckon at this point in time, I'll do mint, yeah. This is a little thing out of a, one of them rubbish magazines with a, a Dolly Bird's view of the world. And she said, I hope the Queen lasts... No, I'm going to have to work this out now. At least another 11 months on the throne and becomes the longest serving monarch ever because she's mint. <laughs> now, when I first saw that in the papers five and a half years ago, so, you know, it might be a month or two out there. But, um, oh, that was a great thing I normally say. No, I'm purposely just standing here, not saying it. Right, so anyone from Birmingham here? Who's was not in the band. band, band. <laughs> no, anyone been to Birmingham? Sounded like you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> we did. Blimey. What did you do there? DJ. DJ. Yeah. Did anyone turn up? Yeah. So you enjoyed yourself? So, yeah. anyway, as I could tell from the pitch of your voice, so <laughs> what a great <laughs> evening you'd had. But I used to live there, and the, the best thing was Central News. And, uh, you know, better than your rubbish northeast today or whatever it's called. But one day I was watching it and um, 
these Chinese blokes come over to buy Longbridge, the car factory. I think they might have been up this neck of the woods in the last few years and bought all the factories up here as well, but uh, that's a true story. <laughs> I was watching Central News, these Chinese blokes here, English blokes here, interpreter in the middle, Chinese bloke said something. Interpreter said to the English blokes, good bit of weather we've had recently. And that was on the television. <laughs> Any football fans here? Yeah. Yep. What are you doing here then? <laughs> Thought you'd be on a pre-European tour of Serbia or somewhere like that. No, oh, so... You can buy this on a record. It's the A-side. That's how good it is. In this pub in Birmingham, this bloke come up to me. I was sat there reading the papers. All right, mate, where do you live? I said, Birmingham. He said, oh, yeah, you're a blues fan. I said, no. He said, that's the trouble when you tell people you're from Birmingham. They always assume you're a blues fan. Thank you. <laughs> But I actually went to see Aston Villa once. Walking up the street, police van followed me all the way up, 50 yards, 100 yards, getting a bit worried. All of a sudden, the back doors burst open, three coppers jumped out. Tell us a joke, Ted. <laughs> That's a true story. So, uh, Unless anyone says something that I can respond to and have a good bit of a chuckle and a laugh, I'm going to clear off. Ah, oh, right. Oh. Clear off then. Oh. No, you don't deserve it. <laughs> right, a couple of late replacement jokes. Went in this chip shop in Preston the other day. Said to the bloke, can I have some... Uh, Chips, please, mate, as that's what you sell. So, yes. I said, have you got any sauce? He said, look, HP? I said, no, I'll pay cash. <laughs> uh, right, one last one before I go. Mate of mine went round his house, walked in. He said, all right, Ted. I said, ah, not too bad. He said, uh, I've got a cup of tea going spare, Ted. Well, right, go on then. He brought this cup of tea in. I said, it don't look angry to me. <laughs> cheers. Cheers, Mark. Cheers, David. Cheers, Ian. The rest of you, bring it off. No. You're going to see the best group you're ever going to see. So make the most of it. Thank you.